words carry weight. Words carry weight. So I was thinking of some words that kind of change history. Give me liberty or give me death. Well, that was a rallying cry for a new nation. How about this one? I have a dream. The words that, that changed things. How about this one? I was seven. One small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. <laughs> Our, the, these words that are so beautiful that echo down through time. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Wow, words carry weight. But words can also carry a different kind of weight. Adolf Hitler wrote, Tell a lie loud enough and long enough, and people will believe it. Wow. Yeah, for every word in his book, Mein Kampf, which means my struggle, if someone figured this out. For every word in that book, 125 people died in World War II. If you can just imagine the power of words, because words carry weight. Think of what a judge can do with one single sentence. See what I did there? One sentence. Or think about the gravity, the, the world-changingness of one word answer to this question. Will you marry me? Whichever way the answer goes, that changes everything for two families, two people, two families. Words carry weight. We're heading to Proverbs. Would you turn, if you've got a Bible on your, on your device or a, a Bible, physical Bible, turn to Proverbs 18, 21. There are so many Proverbs, and each one of them I think, okay, now this is the best proverb. This is, this is the most famous. This is the most well-known. This, this is a good one today. And we're in this series called Words of Wisdom from Proverbs. And it is a whole a series of messages, of Sunday morning messages throughout this summer with the, just looking deeper into Proverbs and the wisdom of God. And I don't know about you, but I want to be wise. There's a lot of information floating around these days, but I want to be wise. I want to know what to do with information, to have a good life and to have a blessed life. And that's what I want for you too. Within this long series on Proverbs, and, and I feel like we're just going to scratch the surface. <laughs> we're, we're spending the summer in Proverbs, but I, I could have spent a year easily in Proverbs. But within it, I'm just dividing it up into some little mini-series. And so we've had this little mini-series. I don't even have a name for this series, but it's, it's these just words of wisdom within Proverbs. And so we've already had two of them. Guard your heart. And last week we heard about choose your friends. And today I want to talk to you about weigh your words. Weigh your words. Because words carry weight. So Proverbs is a book of wisdom. And it has a lot to say about your tongue. About your speech. Your words. And a lot of times it will just say your tongue. But it's not just talking about your physical tongue. It's just talking about your words. What you say. What you do with your tongue. And in Proverbs 18.21, the first, first part of the verse says this, The tongue can bring death or life. The tongue can bring death or life. And we don't always think about it that way. How powerful your tongue is. The tongue can bring death or life. So your speech, your words are a matter of life and death. You can speak life or death over yourself, over another situation, over others. Your tongue is powerful. Your speech is a matter of life and death. So your words can build a bridge or start a war. Like the one I referred to a little bit earlier. Your words can encourage or discourage people. Your words can build someone up or tear them down. Your, your words can tell the truth or tell a lie. Your words can be full of good news or gossip. Your words are very powerful. Your speech is a matter of life and death. But your words don't just affect others. They affect you too. You will feel the ripple effects of the words that you choose to use. In Proverbs 18.21, the rest of the verse says, The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. I just love how gutsy and how in your face God's word can be sometimes. 
The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences, good or bad, positive or negative. In, in another translation, the New King James Version says this, and those who love it, those who love to talk, will eat its fruit, will eat its fruit, will reap the consequences, will eat its fruit. So your words bring consequences, your words bear fruit, and that fruit is fruit you get to eat, good fruit or bad fruit. So the more you speak, the more the ripple effects. And I got to tell you, for me, my tongue is probably hmm, one of my greatest struggles. <laughs> uh, it has gotten me in more trouble in my life. And I'm saying it as if it were detached from me. It's my tongue and the things I say. Sometimes I speak before thinking. And one thing that I've noticed fairly often that I like to do is I like to answer someone's question. I like to give advice even before I know the context, even before I was invited <laughs> to give my two cents worth. And that is something like for me, I've just noticed I, I do that. And, and so I, I, I have to really watch my tongue. Uh, I, another, another area that I get myself into trouble with is my dad jokes. I do love dad <laughs> jokes. I only have about seven or eight of them, but I do love them. It was kind of funny. Our family was together for Father's Day yesterday. I heard Stephen telling some of my dad jokes. They've just spanned the generations now. So that's awesome. I had uh, the, uh, one time, it was at a National Day of Prayer event downtown, and there was a bunch of pastors there, and, and then, uh, so pastors came early, and we're setting up and doing our thing and everything, and I had one, one pastor that I consider a good friend, but I'd never met his wife, and so uh, I, I have a specific dad joke that I use for occasions like this. So I, I, I meet him, and I know inside, I know that's, gonna, that's his wife. He's about to introduce to me his wife. And so I say to him, hi, friend. I use his name, which I will not name today. Hi, hi friend. Is this your daughter? That's just my, it's just my standard joke. And it's, what I mean is, you look old, she looks young and beautiful. That's what I mean by it. So I say this to this young couple. Oh, is this your daughter? And I think, ah, ha, ha, this is so funny. And he goes, you know, a lot of people say that because she's so short and she looks so young, but she's really my wife. <gasps> oh, my goodness. If I could have crawled into a hole right then, I would have because I know I made them feel bad. And I thought I was so funny. But, but you know, one of the things we look forward to in, in fatherhood is retirement. And I have retired that joke. That was the last time... I use that joke. I have some other variations of it that I sometimes pull out, but that one, that has gone bye bye to that one. And here's the thing, your words carry weight. So weigh your words carefully before you speak. And this is a message that I'm just kind of allowing you to come because this is a message I am preaching to myself. <laughs> So if you want to just kind of like come and listen to me preach to myself, this whole message is for me today. But I got to tell you, this message does apply to everyone. It's, it's not just me, and it's not just dads. But I noticed this, that dads, if you will take this message to heart today, you probably have the biggest opportunity to bless others with your words, dads. You have a unique opportunity, different than, different than anybody else. One kind word from you, Dad, can make your wife feel safe and secure. One kind word from you, Dad, can set your kids up for success in the future. You can actually unlock your kids' future with your words. It's that powerful because your words carry weight. And as a dad, your words especially carry so much weight. So dads, weigh your words carefully before you speak them. 
Ushers, I'm going to ask you to go ahead now and bring a gift. We've got a gift for the dads. So if you're a dad in the room, would you stand to your feet right now? Come on, dad, stand up and stay standing until we talk to you a little bit and we've got a little gift for you. If you're a single dad, stand up. If you're an adoptive dad, stand up. If you're a stepdad, stand up. Dads with many kids, young kids, dads who are empty nesters, stand up. And I, what we're giving you, this, this is a very appropriate dad gift because dads usually love meat. Am I right? Dads love meat. And so we have a little barbecue uh, pack for you. It's a little uh, gourmet spice and a little gourmet, uh, gourmet. And we, guys, would you stay standing? Because I'm going to bless you in just a minute. I want to pray for you. Dad, stay standing. We've got a little sauce and a little spice. And it's of a, sh- of a size you don't have to share. <laughs> so what everybody else has is fun, but on yours is going to be some sauce and some spice on whatever you're grilling today. I love it. Dads, I just want to talk to you for a minute because I want you to know that what you do matters. It matters. You have such an important part in the church and in your family, dads. You matter. And I know from experience, you dads, you bear the weight of things that go on in your family differently than the mom. You just do. You, when, when, when things are, are tight financially, it, it does all kinds of things inside of you. Worry and uh, embarrassment or all kinds of things. Because you take it so personally and, and you know that I'm supposed to provide for my family. That's how you feel. But it's not all on your shoulders. God's supposed to provide for your family. Amen? God is supposed to provide for your family. When there are relationship issues in, in, in your family, you can take it so seriously and you can take it all on yourself and say, it's my fault if I were just a better dad, better guy, better whatever. I just want you to know how you are is awesome. God made you. You are made in the image of God. And I know that it, it is such a responsibility because in a sense, you represent Father God to your kids. And the moms do not bear this weight in this way. This is a burden, a responsibility, a weight that, that is on your shoulders and on mine. And I just want you to know that we see your efforts. When you mess up sometimes, it's okay. You're still dad. You're still trying your best. There are probably some words you regret. There are probably some actions you wish you could have done differently. But I just want you to know this. We see you're trying. We love your heart. You're enough. And with God in your life, with God as your heavenly father, if you will pattern after him, it's going to be okay. It is going to be okay. If you just give it your best and you bring God into the equation, you've done your job. I've made some mistakes. I have some regrets just like you. But I want you to know, Dad, we love you. You're enough. You're okay as you are. As I look around this room, I see dads from different countries. I see dads of different ages. I see dads in different life situations. I see some dads separated from their, from their family right now. I see so many different things going on, but one God sees you, knows you, and he speaks something good over your future. So I just want to say, dads, May you follow God all the days of your life. Dads, may you lead your family and influence them to follow Jesus. Dads, may you just give it your best shot and give the rest to God. And that's okay. Dads, we love you. You matter. We are for you. The church loves you. I don't care what society does. That's not the most important voice. It may be the loudest voice, but it's not the most important voice. So I believe that God is speaking through me today to just bless you dads. We love you. You are awesome. You are awesome dads. Could we just give some applause to the dads in the room? And then I want to pray over you guys. Let's pray. Lord, I just extend a hand of blessing towards the dads. And maybe if you're around them, why don't you just extend a hand of blessing? It's a prophetic act towards a dad. And Lord, right now, I just pray, Lord, for your best for every dad. Lord, for the dads that are struggling in their marriage, Lord, I just pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, you would help them, that you would give them what they need. Lord God, I pray that they would run to you and that that would be enough. 
Lord, I pray for the dad who's struggling in any other area, Lord, with temptation or finances or job or just any other area, Lord. We just bring them to you, Lord, and we just bless them in Jesus' name. Lord, we know that you're enough. You're enough. You're enough. Lord, we, we know what's been spoken over us by the world, and we don't care. What we hear is that you are, we hear you, Father, saying, you are my beloved son, that's what, we, that's what we hear you saying today, Lord, and we receive that. Lord, I bless every dad, Lord, to be able to pass on the, the, the wisdom that you've given them. Lord, I pray that they would just be a conduit for your blessing to their families today and every day through the year, Lord. In Jesus' name, we bless the dads. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Woo! Wow. God is good, and he has what you need and we are wise when we follow his lead. In James chapter 3, verse 2, by the way, the book of James in the New Testament has been called the Proverbs of the New Testament. Very practical wisdom in the book of James. In, in, in James chapter 3, verse 2, this is what it says. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. I just love that the Bible is so realistic we all mess up, every one of us, dads, moms, kids, everybody messes up. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect. Wow, that's a big statement. And we could also control ourselves in every other way. We all mess up all the time, men, women, boys, and girls. But if we could just control our tongue, we'd be able to control our whole lives. That's a big statement. So what he's saying is controlling your tongue is the foundational self-discipline. That, like that's the biggie. If you can control that, you can control just about anything. If you get better at controlling um, your tongue, you can get better at controlling your anger, uh, controlling yourself in temptation, all kinds of areas. But there's a problem. James chapter 3 going on, verse 3. We can make a large horse. Somebody say a large horse. Why did I have you repeat that? No reason. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. The tongue is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It could set your whole life on fire, for the tongue is set on fire by hell itself. Oh my goodness, what? That is terrible. That is so major. This little guy, that's why it gets me in so much trouble. It is set on fire by hell itself. Verse 7, people can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Oh, so what are we going to do? It's the worst thing ever, and there's nothing we can do about it. Oh, no, what can be done? Well, in Romans Chapter 7, verse 24 is what it says. Paul's writing, and he's just like you and me. And he goes, oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So there is hope for my tongue. There is hope for your tongue. And it is in Jesus Christ our Lord. The Ten Commandments and the Law of Moses showed us that God's standard is up here. God's standard is perfection. His standard is perfect holiness. That is his standard. But you and I are all sinners. And even when we try to follow the law, we mess up. And none of us can control our tongue 24-7. Am I right? His word is true on this point. So God did something to help us. Jesus took on flesh and bones and a tongue. Interesting. He lived the sinless life that you and I could never have lived. Jesus used his tongue, think about it, to give dignity to the outcast person. 
Jesus used his tongue to welcome and bless children. Jesus used his tongue and he taught people to follow God with their whole lives. And then Jesus laid down his life to pay for your sin and for my sin on the cross in a way that you and I could never have done. So when you put your faith in Jesus, he lives his life through you. That is what the Bible says. You in Jesus, Jesus in you. And when you rely on his power, he even speaks through you by his Holy Spirit. I, I love the verse in eight, uh, Romans 8, 4, a little bit next chapter in Romans, in the, the message, which is a contemporary paraphrase. And now, what the law code asked for, perfection, holiness, high standards, but we couldn't deliver, is accomplished. So what, we, what the law demanded, perfection, but we couldn't give, we couldn't give perfection, but that is accomplished as we, instead of redoubling our own efforts, I'm just going to try harder to speak life. I'm just going to try harder. Instead, we simply embrace what the Spirit is doing in us. So there is some very good news in there for you. Our tongues are out of control and no one can tame them. But Jesus did something about it. And he laid down his life so that we could have find eternal life in him. And now he lives his life through us. So now there is hope for your tongue. There is hope for my tongue. And our hope is Jesus. It's his work in your life by the Holy Spirit. Man, another area. I, 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 when I began the work on this message, I did a long brainstorm list of all the ways my tongue gets me in trouble. And all the things I regret saying with my tongue. And there's been something recently, a very specific thing with me, with my tongue. And I call it the snappy answer. So I, for some reason, have had a long-standing habit for years. Uh, it's sort of like my, my humor. It's the way I engage in conversations. It's, 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 it's how I engage in conversations, really. So if someone's talking... I just jump right in there, and the second they take a breath, I give a snappy answer. And sometimes the answer is sort of like this. Oh, is that your daughter? I, like, that is my, it's my go-to. I'm going to think of a, a snappy, sarcastic, maybe humorous thing. And I, I began to feel like that's probably not the best. Uh, sometimes, like in a serious situation, I would just let fly with a snappy answer. I know. And so I began to feel like, wow, the Lord is working on me on the inside. And so like, I can think of within even this past week of at least five times where I was about to go and let it fly. And I just, I just closed my mouth. And that is not me. Like, I have the snappy answer ready at all times. And I have just been shutting my mouth by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I am so grateful. It happened in board meeting uh, this past week. It happened in uh, meetings with the contractor this past week. It happened with other friends this week. It happened with family this week, where I was ready to let it fly. And not necessarily like a mean thing. I'm just saying it's the snappy answer. I don't know how else to describe it. It's the snappy answer that does not belong there. It's out of place in that conversation. And I am so grateful that God is working on me and he is reminding me, you know, he reminds me I have to actually shut the mouth. You know, I don't think he's clamping it shut for me, but he is reminding me and I am, I am listening to that. And when I look back on those situations, now I don't have the, the regrets that I would have had in those situations this past week because I can't tame my tongue, but Jesus can. And he is. So if there's hope for me, there's hope for you. Like, trust me. <laughs> so I set the bar for the snappy tongue. See, and I'm doing it right now, aren't I? Yep, I can tell. Whoop, rain it in, Garen. Okay, great. I'm back. Um, we, we enjoy getting up to, I think, only maybe two or three games. Uh, our, our, our grandkids that are old enough to, to, to uh, be playing sports uh, for they're little. Our, our grandkids are eight, six. Those ones are eight, six, and four, eight, six, and five. 
And so, like, for some of them, it's their, it's their, it, I think all of them might have been their first year to actually do, like, registered sports, these, these sports, flag football and soccer. And oh, we were there on the last game of the season a few weeks ago. And I just about started crying. Well, I did start crying, but I was choking it back. On the soccer field, after little Ollie's last game, Oliver would be the six-year-old, six or seven, six, 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 six-year-old. And it's his first year, and his hair cover, completely covers his eyes. So, I mean, he's just out there doing his best, running his little heart out. And the coach at the end, okay, so the, the way it is in entry-level sports, like the coach a lot of times is on the field going, no, no, come over here, stand here, no, no, kick it that way, kick it that way. Like, they're, they're really helping him, you know. And at the end of, that, of their little season, about 10-week season, the coach this one coach printed out a certificate for each kid praising something good that he saw in them. Oh, my goodness. And then, oh, he's, so then, then he tells all those little kids, this is what I see in you. This is what I see in you. You did so good. You did so great this season. And he comes up to Ollie. He gives Ollie this certificate for the biggest heart. No! His mom's crying. I'm crying. The dads are laughing. It was just such a beautiful moment. And I found that coach a little bit later, and I said, you know what? I want you to know something. Just saying, and he said a bunch of other good stuff too, but just saying, speaking those words of life over them, you never know which words a kid is going to take with them into life. I can remember specific words at different times in my life, some negative and some positive. Probably millions of words have been spoken over me, but I remember a few. I told that coach, you know what, coach? I'm praying that those words that you spoke today, he never forgets. Because they were words of character. They were words of how he interacts with others. It wasn't even about how he kicks or doesn't kick. It was a life word. That coach spoke life. May Oliver remember that all of his life. And what a lesson for you and for me. So today, when we're out there playing cornhole or throwing axes for our Father's Day <laughs> games in just a few minutes, why not use this opportunity to just speak life over somebody? Maybe that will be one of the words that they remember and actually changes their life. Sometimes a simple, simple compliment, when you don't get a lot of compliments, it changes your life and makes you think, wow, maybe I could do something. Maybe I could amount to something. We value speaking life so much, we made it one of our core values of our congregation. We speak life. Point to the canvas if you can find it. There it is. We speak life. And that is, that is right out of Proverbs 18.21 that we read today. We believe that our words matter to God. We encourage and build others up. And we communicate in ways that are helpful, positive, moral, and true. That's, that's an aspirational statement, meaning that's what we want to do. And it's also a practical statement. That is what we do, our best around here to do. And for me, I'm growing in that. And I have been for years, and I probably will be for years. You can grow in speaking life. Proverbs 10, verse 11 says, The words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. Oh, I love that so much. The words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. What if today... What if this week, what if over your family, what if over your friends, what if over your coworkers, your neighbors, your classmates, what if you saw yourself as an active, not a dormant, an active life-giving fountain? Wow, what a difference we could make in our, in our area, in our city, in our region. Because the words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. So by the power of the Holy Spirit, may you be a life-speaking, life-giving fountain of blessing. Your words carry weight. 
So weigh your words carefully. Would you stand to your feet and let's pray? Would you bow your heads with me and let's, let's just pray. Let's just take this time for God online. If you're, if you're there with us online, close your eyes, bow your heads, and let's do this. Let's pray. Lord, I just want to thank you so much for the gift of speech. The, the very first thing you did in creation, God, was you spoke. You spoke. Let there be, and there was. Let there be light, and there was light. Thank you for the gift of communication. Thank you for the gift of speech. Thank you for our tongues. Thank you for our words, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to speak powerful, positive, empowering words of life. Lord, may we be a life-giving fountain. Everywhere that we go, Lord, I pray that that's how we would be. And so with your head still bowed, I want to ask you, if you want to embrace what the Holy Spirit wants to do with your words, if you want to be able to control your tongue by the power of the Spirit, if you want to be able to speak life, would you just raise your hands? And my hand is, is way up. I want to speak life. Absolutely. And Lord, I just want to pray for every person whose hand is raised. Lord, I just pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, you to work in us, just like you've been working in me, that at certain times I just need to shut my mouth. And Lord, I'm grateful for that because I look back with, with no regrets. And so, Lord, I pray, Lord, in the same way you'd work through me, through us, Lord God, empower us, tame our tongue, control our tongue, Lord God, so that we could be a life-giving fountain. You can put your hands down, head still bowed. I, I want to ask you, just to be real, has anyone ever spoken a word of death over you, a word that discouraged you, a word that tore you down or made you doubt yourself or God? Has someone spoken a word over you a long time ago or very recently or uh, months ago, has someone spoken a word that it immediately comes to your mind? Yes. Would you raise your hand? And I, I can think of some words that were spoken of over me that tore me down. They discouraged me. And so, Lord, you see our hands. Lord, we're just being very practical with you, our Father, right now. Lord, I just pray right now in Jesus' name that you would remove the sting of death. Those words were spoken. There is no way they can be retracted. But Lord, you can take the sting out. Author of life, I'm praying right now, I just picture hearts with thorns in them. Thorns that represent negative, death-filled words. And Father, I just see you by the hand of the Spirit going in and plucking out one thorn at a time until pretty soon there's no more thorns there. Lord, take away those thorns right now of, of hurts, of wounds, of discouragement. Take them out, Lord God. Remove them from our hearts. And now I just pray, Spirit of God, Come around our hearts, every heart in this place, every heart within the sound of my voice online. Come and heal our hearts. Jesus, it was written about you that you came to bind up the brokenhearted. So I just pray right now, your healing power flows all around our hearts, Lord God, that 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 regardless of what was said about us or to us in the past, that you're changing our hearts so that what will flow out of it is a life-giving fountain. I thank you, Father, that we don't have to speak bitterness. I thank you that we don't have to speak rage. I thank you that we don't have to speak humor so that we'll be accepted or loved. We're already accepted and loved by you. Lord, may we speak acceptance. May we speak life. May we speak healing. May we speak encouragement. May we notice those little tries and praise them. Praise them. Thank you, Lord. You're doing something very powerful right now. You're remaking hearts. You're healing hearts. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
praise you, Lord. You can put your hands down, head still bowed. I'm wondering if you have put your faith in Jesus. Because if you will put your faith in Jesus to save you, then he will give you a new heart, spiritually speaking. That's what he wants to do for you right now. How, how do you receive that salvation? Turn away from your sins, turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead and he'll do the rest. If today you want to put your faith in Jesus to save you, you want to become his apprentice, you want to learn to speak like Jesus spoke, would you just raise your hand in the room or online either way? Yeah, that's so good. I'd love to just coach you in a prayer. Maybe this is your first time or maybe you're coming back to Jesus. Would you just repeat after me in church? Let's just, let's just support them in prayer. Say this to Jesus. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you just prayed that prayer, we got a course for you. Pastor Christian will tell us a little bit about that. I want to make sure you take it. God bless you. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Garen. The words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. Let's bring that into our lives. Amen? Amen. Well, if you filled out a Connect card, I just encourage you to put it in the box on your way out. Um, and then... Um, it, also, if you accepted Jesus, if you, if you started the journey of following Jesus today or in previous weeks, please stop by the following Jesus table in the back. We have a gift for you, a free course um, and a free book. It's just seven easy steps on how you can get started in your journey following Jesus. Um, and then also... Let's celebrate dads out on the plaza. Yeah. So we're going to have axe throwing. They're plastic. I, I wanted metal ones, but they, I got shot down. <laughs> we have axe throwing. We got basketball. Um, what's the thing? Cornhole. Tons of, tons of fun games, root beer, snacks. Go enjoy it. Celebrate your dads. And we'll see you again next week in person or online. God bless.